And uh, welcome to tonight's HST Public Forum here in the heart of downtown Vancouver. My name is Peter Holt and I'm pleased to be moderating this evening's activities. Firstly, I'd like to welcome everybody to Simon Fraser University's splendid Morris J. Wask Centre for Dialogue. This centre opened in September 2000 and was created to provide the best possible environment for full participation of everyone in attendance, and I'm sure it will serve us very well tonight. Simon Fraser University is proud to host this forum. It is part of a series of 11 public sessions being held in 10 BC communities prior to the HST referendum. As some of you will know, we are here as a result of the Public Dialogue Fund created by the Government of BC. This fund is independently administered by BC universities, college, colleges and institutes. Three associations representing British Columbia's post-secondary institutions are responsible for organising the forums. They are the BC Colleges, BC Association of Institutes and Universities and the Research at Universities Council of British Columbia. Our goal here tonight and at all the HST public forums is to hold an informative, respectful public dialogue before British Columbians vote in the referendum. And this forum is organised in an impartial way. I am here to facilitate the discussion and to ensure the speakers have a chance to present their views equally and audience members have the opportunity to participate in dialogue and to ask questions. We do ask that you keep your questions short so we can get in as many people as possible. And the focus is on the questions, not statements, not small speeches and definitely not grandstanding. If there are disruptions, we will ask you twice to be respectful. And if the situation continues, the person in extreme circumstances may well be asked to leave. What won't be tolerated is disruptions through heckling, etc. We know it's an emotional topic for many people, but we need to be respectful and we do need to listen. Representatives from the two groups that have been successful in their request for public funding to advance their views about the referendum will be speaking at this forum. And the two official sides are, and I'm sure most of you know this already, but the fight HSC Society, which is the yes side, supporting a referendum vote to return to the PST-GST combination, and the Smart Tax Alliance, the no side, supporting a referendum vote to retain the current HST. We are here to provide a platform for discussion and to encourage the dialogue, so British Columbians make an informed decision on the HST referendum or in the HST referendum, I should say. Simon Fraser University is not taking sides, and I'm here to moderate the proceedings in an entirely non-partisan way. At this time, I'd like to introduce the people who will be speaking this evening. We have, representing the Smart Tax Alliance, Peter Leach, Katarina Wong, you're out of order, guys. You confused me there for a moment. Chris, you didn't look like Katarina. And Chris Thompson, the creator of the Five Fight HST, I think. And they're representing the Smart Tax Alliance. And from the Fight HST side, we have some well known faces Bill van der Zarm, Chris Delaney, and Bill Thielman. Each side will make an opening presentation of up to 10 minutes. Then following the initial presentations, each side will provide a five-minute rebuttal and then we'll proceed to questions from the audience here and online. Now I do invite you to address your questions to one of our presenters and the other side, once you've presented the question and the person you've presented the question to answers, the other side will have a chance for a short rebuttal. And we're looking at maybe just one minute maybe uh, of each of those responses to your questions because we do want to get the questions moving through. If you're uncomfortable at actually uh, speaking your question, uh, please feel free to write your question on a piece of paper. Uh, has somebody got the uh, paper cards anywhere, Lizette? Are they all in front of you? Okay, that's wonderful. That's right. 
So just write on one of those pieces of paper and they'll be collected throughout the evening and I will get the chance to read out some of those questions. We will also take questions that are submitted online. Now before we finally get started, I'd like to remind everyone that this forum can also be seen on the internet at www.hstpublicforums.ca. Now, so that everyone can hear the discussion, we do ask that you set your phones to vibrate, but we also ask, unusually, to keep those phones on. And we encourage you to tweet your views and impressions of what you hear tonight. And for this forum, use the Twisha, uh, Twitter, <laughs> sorry about that, the Twitter hashtag, hash HST XXX XXX. Now you've heard already that the I've said XXXXXX, that's not true. I'm very good at reading my notes. It's, it's, it's basically hash HST, isn't it? It's up there. Thank you very much, HST Vancouver. The XXX one is unrestricted. We don't want the XXX one, sorry about that. It does prove I'm very good at following my notes, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, you've already been um, right. Now, the order of tonight's presentations was done by a flip of a coin back at the first forum in Dawson Creek last week. The, slides have been taking, the sides have been taking turns for the orders for the presentations. And so let's get started with the first presentation. And first up is Bill van der Zam from the Fight HST side. Bill. Thank you, Peter. Ladies and gentlemen, most of us, I'm sure, shop fairly regularly. I perhaps a little more regularly now than what I used to because Lily intends to take me out. I think she wants to impress upon me what the average person, the average household needs to put up with these days and where it is everything appears to be going straight up. And I come out of the store, it doesn't matter whether, whether it's groceries or the drugstore or wherever else, and I say to Lillian, this is impossible. How does the average person, the average family keep up with it? Prices keep going up now. It's nothing new perhaps, but it seems to be more so now than what we've seen it in the past. And initially when it happened, the government came in and they said, uh, we promised we wouldn't have the HST during an election, but we're going to have the HST because it's so good for you. We're going to take 2.8 billion, I think they started somewhat lower, but that's the number they ended up with, out of your pockets, the consumer, and we're somehow going to get this back to industry and back to government, which they didn't say initially either, and that'll cure all things because prices will come down. Well, we've now had the HST for a whole year and there hasn't been a price come down anywhere. If anyone knows of one, I'd like to know I'll go there myself. And I guess, I guess it sort of followed from that early on as well that the government would promise us because they realized there was a big debate coming on. So they promised us a level playing field. They said we'll give each side, the yes side, the no side, $250,000 and you can travel the province and you can advertise and you can go on TV, radio or whatever and promote your message. Then along with that they changed the rules. An ordering cabinet changed the rules and the rules removed the limit of spending that we had been accustomed to with the initiative vote and referenda. It removed the limits. You could spend as much as you want. And they also removed any sort of scrutiny that we certainly were subjected to, and rightly so, during the initiative vote. The advertising when we were there at first was checked for accuracy, and they certainly wanted to know that it was truthful, and that it wasn't presented in a way that might be misleading, but no scrutiny in the referendum. Now I understand why the feds want the uh, HST, they're going to get $300 million a year extra in income tax. So in five years they'll get their money, their investment paid back, but this will go on forever and they know that. Because once we have the HST, it'll be like Europe and other places. How do you get rid of it even when you're suffering and realize that it's a disaster? You're stuck with it. And that happens often with taxes. They're introduced and sometimes temporarily so, but they're always forever. So I understand why they're there. 
and they're also getting a hefty administration fee. They're doing the administering, but it's costly. It's a percentage of, and it adds up to a big number. And I understand why the province is there, because they, they're in a bit of a mess, which they created, and I guess they never paid attention to a message we hear every time we turn on the radio, which says, know your limit and play within it. That's good advice, but it doesn't apply to government, it seems, and obviously didn't for a number of years, and they've dug themselves a big hole, which they're now trying to fill from your pockets. So I understand why the province might be there, because they never told us initially, but there's a tax grab here as well. And I know why the business is here. The business group is spending millions of dollars. You've seen the glitzy ads on television. My sister-in-law called me from central Vancouver Island and said me and all my friends today received a telephone call from the Smart Tax Alliance telling us to come to a meeting to find out how good the HST. So they're spending it on radio, they're spending it on television, they're spending it on telephone companies. They're throwing millions of dollars at this. Now, They'll tell you they're throwing millions of business dollars at the, <coughs> the HST and promoting it for your good. Now, if you believe that the businesses will come together and gather millions of dollars and throw it at advertising for your benefit, then we've got a problem in our province. I don't think you do believe that. But that's what's happening. And they're throwing out ads like, this is why there should be scrutiny. The new HST saves you money. Well, we know it doesn't save you money. It costs you a lot more, but the lie really is 10%. We don't have a 10% tax. We have a promise for 10% in three years. The problem the government has, if they promise something for next week, most people wouldn't believe it in our province. This is for three years from now. But they're advertising as though it was here already. There's a card they put out. Vote no, vote no to higher taxes. And again, the 10%. There's no 10%. Not only is it only a promise, but the minister himself has agreed and admitted that they can't do it before they get approval from Ottawa. Because it's no longer a provincial tax, it's a federal tax. And then the Smart Tax Alliance managed to get a hold of a, a voting information package. I thought this was sort of privy only to elections BC to put out when the vote took place. But no, they got a whole bunch of these and they're handing them out throughout the province and they've printed over top, vote no to save money. So there's a lot of this happening and I can understand why because there's a whole lot here about politics but more so about money. Money plays a big role in all of this oftentimes and never bigger than what we see it today. Now what's happening in our province as a result of the HST, we have, we have businesses where I live, in Tawasson and Ladner, and there's a little headline in the paper that says, out of business. Stores are closing. Consumers are not buying the discretionary items. They're buying the necessities perhaps, but they're cutting back on discretionary items. And it's affecting small business. It's not affecting the big industries in this province, the people funding the other side. It's affecting a lot of small businesses in little communities and certainly in Vancouver and surrounds. And we find that uh, uh, they, they, the, the jobs that were promised, you'll recall there was a report came out, first of all there was a report from the C.D. Howe Institute which said for, for seven or ten years you'll suffer and then things will begin to improve. Well for the business community they improved four months after the tax was introduced, but you might have to wait seven or ten years. Then the government appointed uh, a panel, an independent, so-called independent panel. And the after the government said, we're going to have 130,000 130, jobs over 10 years as a result of the HSD. Well, the so-called independent panel came back and said, no, it's 24,400 jobs. And then the government came out and said, with a pamphlet, and said, it's going to create between 24,000 and 100,000 jobs. The independent panel said 24,400, quite specific. The government took that number and said 24,000 to 100,000. Folks, 
I don't know if there's anything we can trust anymore, and certainly we need to be very aware, which is why I'm pleased, and we all ought to be pleased to get as much information as we can about the HST. But I can tell you, we've traveled the province, people are upset, and perhaps more so the people that are living along the Alberta border, because many British Columbians are escaping to Alberta to make their bigger purchases, just like Bellingham has become the boomingest city in North America from people from Surrey and Coquitlam and other places going across the line to do their purchases. So we have a major problem and the only way we can resolve it is to practice real democracy, which we've never had an opportunity to do in this country or in this province. This is the first time. And which the people of Ontario, which were also opposed to the HSD, they did their pollings, 75 to 80 percent opposed. It was 85 percent in BC, but both governments said we're going to do it anyway. However, in our province, we had the referendum legislation, we had the Initiative Act, 705,000 people signed the petition in the rain and wind, in the rain and wind and the snow to get rid of the HST, we have that legislation. We can actually tell the government for once in this province or in the Commonwealth, hey, you are there for us. You work for us, not us for you. You get your pay, you get your fat pensions, you get all the benefits from us, not from your party, not from your leader. It's us you have to listen to. And if we don't tell them that now, if we let them get away with the HSD and what they told us about it before it came in, as it came in, and after it came in, if we let that go, and if we keep the HSD, I don't know what future governments might do, whether they're this stripe or another stripe, whatever the stripe. Because they'll say, hey, we got away with it. All we need to do is wait long enough and people will give up. It's not going to happen. You're going to vote yes. You're going to vote yes to extinguish the HST. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bill. Next up is Peter Leach from the Smart Tax Alliance. Peter. Uh, thanks very much, Peter. In just over a month, British Columbians have a rare opportunity. They get to be finance minister for a day. They will choose the sales tax system that will live for them for the coming decades. I put it that way because our old provincial system, the PST, was created in 1948. The, the economy in British Columbia has changed dramatically since then. It is a much more global economy with strong knowledge and service-based industries to complement our resource sector. Countries around the world are adopting an HST or value-added tax system. In fact, nine out of the top ten fastest growing economies in the world have, adopt this, uh, have adopted this system. Except one, uh, Qatar, which is oil rich and considering adopting it in 2012. The reason the HST enables BC companies, 98% which are small businesses, to become stronger and create good paying jobs which is essential to maintain our standard of living. But the fight HST folks want to go back to an ancient, unfair, and antique tax system that serves no one well and will cost you more. In fact, they even admit it's not a good tax in their own reports. I'm here today to explain why we should move forward with the HST. I'm not going to talk about the politics and how the tax came into being. I'll leave that for the politicians and the pundits. I'm a chartered accountant. I'm here voluntarily and employed in a small business that services the film industry. I want to protect the jobs for all of our employees, the 13 full-time employees and the seven part-time employees, that the HS and the HST has really made a positive difference to our business. We can all agree on one thing. No one liked how the tax was brought in. The politics were mishandled. But there's an old fitting cliche don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. How can I stand here, or sit here, <laughs> and defend the HST? Because it's the right thing to do. For seniors, for the poor, and with the new 10% rate reduced to 11% next year and 10% in 2014 for all families across the province. One of the biggest myths about the HST it, is a, it will hurt families, seniors, and low-income people the most. It's a powerful myth backed by so-called logic. The argument goes like this. 
Families, seniors, and low-income people have the least money. The HST is a new tax that they will have to pay. Therefore, they have to spend more and get less. The big picture is something completely different. First, there are exemptions, either to the HST or the provincial portion. Basic groceries, prescription drugs, residential rent, most health and dental services, and most educational services are completely tax-free. Home heating, gasoline, cooks, child-sized clothes and shoes, car seats and booster seats, diapers, feminine hygiene products have no provincial tax. They are subject only to the same federal portion of the tax that they were before, at 5%. How does this play out? Simon Fraser University economist Jonathan Kesselman looked at the big picture in his recent report on HST. He concludes that poor households and those at moderate incomes are actually net gainers from the switch to HST. And now, with the reduction, all families will benefit. That's because the mix of products that make up a household budget, those items most insulated from the HST are a larger part of the lower income budgets. And the new 10% HST, when it comes into play, makes sure that people will save an average of $120 a family. But that is only part of the big picture when it comes to families, seniors, and low-income people. There were tax cuts and there were HST credits for low-income families brought in at the same time. These have to be put into the equation. For the 1.1 million British Columbians getting these checks, any extra tax they're paying is erased by the credit. Low-income seniors are doubly protected. They get the HST credit, plus they get their old age security and guaranteed income supplement benefits indexed for price increases caused by the HST. The new 10% HST puts families and individuals ahead. Going back to the PST, GS system will cost them an average of $120 more. Families and individuals making $20,000 a year will be $130 ahead. At $40,000, they're $159 ahead. Even at $100,000, your family will be $61 ahead under the new HST. The new HST has erased the challenges and the costs for all but the richest families in BC. It's put more money in your pocket. Chris. My name is Chris Thompson, and I'm here because I wrote a video. And the video is called Fight, Fight HST, a letter to Bill Vanderzam. It's available on YouTube. And uh, thank you. And the main scope of my video was to look at the claims that Fight HST was making in the report called the Top 10 Reasons the HST is Bad for BC, and, I and to look at their sources and compare what they were saying with what the sources were saying. And it didn't match up. At the moment, it has about 57,000 hits on YouTube. And I would like to stress one thing. I was not paid by the Liberal Party to make this video. I will also admit uh, that I have now received seven free glasses of water for making this video, and so far that's it. Now, one of the main reasons I made this video is because I strongly dislike when people yell things that aren't true. Mr. Van Der Zand and Mr. Delaney will say things like, taxes never go down! And they don't, except for when they do. For instance, in Canada, personal income taxes were lowered in 2000, 2001, 2004, and 2006. The GST went from 7% to 6% to 5% and it stayed there. The maritime HST started out at 19%, went down to 15, then to 14, then to 13, and as I'm sure they'll mention, it went back up to 15. And additionally, all of the tax brackets in Canada are indexed for inflation and for income, so that if you're a fixed income senior, your income tax bill has gone down every single year since 1999. My main message is to listen to what the fight HST people are saying and think through the consequences of what they're saying. They are thinking that if they yell the message loud enough, people won't notice that it isn't true. Katarina? Hello, my name is Katarina Wong, and I'm not a politician either, and I come here uh, voluntarily. And the reason I'm here tonight is to share with you some information about the HST and hopefully it will give you some um, information to decide on which would be the better tax system. Um, I work for a company in Richmond and it employs 700 people. Like most businesses, we have to try to tighten our belt in this econo economic uh, downturn by cutting some of the extended medical coverage to employees. 
Because of the power of the HST benefits, our company was able to maintain the same level of medical benefit to several hundred employees. For me, it's very um, 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 good story because I'm a diabetic and I spend a lot of money on medication. And without that same level of coverage, I would be in, in a lot of financial um, problem. And also, you know, there has been a lot of false argument against the HST. And so I'm here to, they say that the HST is bad for small businesses and credit argue that the tax will drive away businesses. And also they say that it will force company to go underground. And some of them claim that the HST is cumbersome and is complicated for businesses to, to deal with. I'm here to tell you that those statements are wrong and and all of them are wrong. Now, the HST is the biggest improvement to the tax system since the PST was introduced. Again, credits also relying on misleading logics that HST is higher, therefore people have less money to spend, and therefore it's going to drive businesses bankrupt. Well, the real economic figure after the HST was implemented, it tells a very different story. Just this April, the Conference Board of Canada reported that British <coughs> Columbia has the highest consumer confidence in Canada. And our, our retail sales remain unchanged in the six months after the HST was implemented. And also the unemployment rate last month was exactly the same as it was before the HST came into being. And it is not the economic Armageddon that, that predicted uh, by some of the folks that, that they said the HST caused this effect. But what about individual businesses? How is HST impacting them? Well, most businesses are happy with the accounting changes and the anti-HST folks have made a outrageous claim that it is more cumbersome. But I ask you this, how can, how can we go on saying that preparing two different sets of return, the PHG and GHC return, be more cumbersome than filing just one return? And the return was exactly the same as the GST before unless the Webster Dictionary have it all mixed up and swap the, the word cumbersome with being easier in the dictionary, I really don't have any idea about how folks is talking about um, HST. Could you please um, close now? Yeah. You're over time. Yeah. And thank you very much, both the presentations. And now for the first... And now for the first rebuttal from Fight HST. Good evening, everyone. I get a kind of a kick out of people like Chris Thompson who say that he did a video called Fight Fight HST because he's concerned about misinformation. Of course, he didn't do a video about the government and all the misinformation that they've been spreading for the last two years. We were told that uh, it was going to be a $1.9 billion transfer from the business community onto the consumer. But the independent panel uh, said that it's more like $2.8 billion, that it's a huge tax grab by the government. We were told that there'd be 130,000 new jobs created, but the independent panel chosen by the government says no, it's actually 24,000 jobs. And we're told by the government repeatedly that it's only a net increase before their cuts of $350 per family. But to get to that number, they're saying that they're um, estimating that 90% of what you pay in HST will be passed back to you in lower prices. The actual number per family is $1,200. And we've not seen lower prices. But no video about that, just about us. So we just want to clear up the objectivity there. But what's even more interesting is that we now see the government agreeing with us that this is a bad tax. Two weeks ago, Premier Clark made an, a, a major announcement of changes to the tax. Essentially, she blinked. She admitted that what we'd been saying all along was right. It's a tax grab, it burdens seniors, it burdens families, it harms small businesses, it doesn't work. We're no longer debating whether this is a good tax or a bad tax. 
Both sides now agree it's a bad tax. We're debating what to do about that. The Premier says, trust me, three years from now I'll lower the burden for you and if you vote the way I want you to, I'll give you a little bribe. I'll give you a little bit more money back than what you got before, but it'll still be a lot more, it'll still be a lot less than what you paid. What kind of a tax policy is that? What kind of an economist comes up with a policy that says, let's tax the people way too much money and we'll give them a little bit of it back in a refund? Whatever you want to call that, that's not economics. It's just naked politics. So let's call it for what it is. And they love to quote economists, especially John Kesselman. But we see the same two or three economists, Kesselman and Mintz and these other guys, that the government trots out all the time to validate their numbers. And interestingly enough, it's all again based on proje projections and predictions and estimates of what will come back to us. But the real hard numbers of what they're actually taking in in taxes, not one single economist in British Columbia predicted or could tell us. And all they had to do was look at the actual budget numbers. So it's $800 million more than what the government told us and not one economist was able to tell us that. How good are these economists? What do these economists know if they can't tell us real numbers that are sitting right in front of their face? The truth of the matter is, the HST has hurt British Columbia. Unemployment has gone up since the tax came in. It was at 7.4% on July 1st, 2010. It is now at 8.8%. That's tens of thousands of jobs lost. Businesses are closing, particularly the restaurant industry getting hit hard. People who are part-time have been laid off. People who are full-time have been moved to part-time. Prices have either stayed the same or gone up, and even the ones that stayed the same have gone up because of the HST. But we're seeing indirect hits to our economy, such as groceries and gasoline, which continue to go up as well, even though they're not HST-able, because of the ancillary HST impact on them, where you have the delivery costs and everything else that gets um, added into that. The HST kills jobs because it kills consumption. They've got it backwards. If you want to create jobs, you create a demand. You create a demand for widgets, for productivity. You don't create productivity and then kill consumption. That doesn't work. All you do is allow businesses to create more, but if nobody's buying it, what's the benefit? You have to create product productivity by creating a demand. You create demand by freeing up consumption. The HST is not a new tax. It is not a progressive, cool new system that's come into the world here just recently that we've all figured out. It's been around as long as the HST, sorry, as long as the PST. It came about in France in 1954. It's 60 years old. So the good news of that is we've got mm. plenty of opportunity to judge the impact of it. What has the HST, called a value-added tax in Europe, done for Europe in that time? Well, has anybody been reading the papers lately? Europe is collapsing. The economies of Greece, of, of uh, Ireland, of Italy, of Spain, of Portugal, all of these supposedly first world countries are collapsing. Why? because the tax burden is too high, because governments are borrowing money, because they're not collecting tax revenues, and they keep increasing the value-added tax to try to make up for that driving the economy underground further. We're already seeing it happening here in the construction industry. It's being driven underground even worse than it was before. And we're already seeing the HST being hidden in the price here. If you go to many restaurants, they don't even show you the HST as a separate item anymore Chris, because it makes people now, so please. upset. We need to go back to the PST and return our democracy, return our province, and return our money to ourselves because the PST, for all its flaws, is a far superior tax for British Columbia than the HST. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. And now the second rebuttal from Smart Tax Alliance. Thank you, Chris. I'd like to, uh, to respond to a couple of things that Chris Delaney said. Uh, number one, I'd like to read his comment about my video. Uh, I think it was from the Vancouver Sun. It said, Fight HST lead organizer Chris Delaney said he is very skeptical that a law student took on the video project without backing from pro-HST groups. Quote, unquote, the guy isn't really mad at us. He's a defender of the government. I'd like to make two corrections. Number one, I'm absolutely not defending the government. I'm defending the tax. And number two, I am mad because they say things like, no prices have gone down, prices have gone up, they always go up. Well, there's a study by a guy named John Kesselman, who's from Simon Fraser, and he actually figured out what the numbers were. And if you Google John Kesselman and HST, you'll find the study and you can read the answers yourself. 
And the answer is they have gone down. Different industries have gone down by different amounts. Now, the study is a little bit complicated, so go take a look at it. They also say that I haven't done anything about this in a video. Well, the month is young. They also say it's a bad tax. Look at how bad Europe is. VAT rates are 20% in Greece. They're 20% they're elsewhere. Well, I did a little bit of research, and it turns out that Sweden has the highest VAT rate in Europe, or three-way tie for the highest VAT rate in Europe, at 25%. Now, let me explain to you what an economic post-apocalyptic hellscape Sweden is. They're seventh in UN life expectancy. Canada's 11. In terms of the quality of living, in the Human Development Index, which is the index that's adjusted for the inequality of earnings, they are third. Canada's eight. They're seven spots ahead of Canada on the World Health Organization's healthcare rankings. Stockholm was voted the sixth most livable city in the world in 2010. And in the 2011, uh, sorry, 2010, 2011 World Economic Forum Global Competitive Re Competitiveness Report, Sweden is ranked number two, and Canada was ranked number 10. These are the types of things they say that just drive me up the wall. They make these blanket assertions that are just wrong. They also mentioned a C.D. Howe report from 2008 for the government. They also don't cite it on any of their websites, they just simply state it. And I found it and I printed out a copy. And I'd like to read the title, this is a, the footnote on the title page. The study itself is called Growth Oriented Sales Tax Reform for Ontario. And I know most of you are asleep already, but in this issue, Ontario should scrap its antiquated retail sales tax and opt for a made in Ontario value added tax that would improve fairness, encourage investment and wage growth, reduce administrative costs for government and for business. Peter, do you have anything to add? Well, um, I've been in a few of these with Mr. Delaney and Mr. Vandersam, and, and I know Mr. Delaney is an expert in the film industry, uh, the agricultural industry, and uh, he is a better economist than the researchers at SFU and UBC. But having said that, um, I hope everyone here does their own research to see what the value of the job creating HST is all about, because that's why I'm here. Um, I worked in this province for over 40 years, and I feel I'm privileged to have a job, and I really like the high-paying job creativity that the HST has implemented. Let's go over the facts. We're going to move from 12% down to 10%. We go to 11% next year because we've got an agreement, we've got a contract with the federal government that says we can't reduce it until 2012. That's why we reduce it by 1% there. We want a balanced budget. That's why we don't reduce it by the second percentage point. But that is a move of $850 million per percentage point back to the consumer. The average BC family will then save $120 a year. That's the average BC family. Children and seniors will receive $175 transition checks. The reason that that was done, that's seniors under $40,000, the reason that was done is because of the contract where we can't reduce it by the 1% until 2012. This is safeguarding jobs in British Columbia. In a global economy, this is going to make a huge difference to the revenues that governments can collect so that we can pay for health care, education, which make up 70% of the budget plus all the other services that government provides. We all want the services. It's important to us. It's important to our standard of living. And so I implore you to look into and do your own research on the benefits of HSD. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now it's time to uh, open the floor for questions. Uh, and please note, we'll be receiving questions in different ways uh, during the evening. And to ask a question with your mic, you just press the grey uh, black button. And we have the first question there, sir. Thank you. Um, my question, or, or, or it's more of a more of a comment. Um, I did a, a We're looking for questions. <laughs> oh, all right. You're looking for I don't have a question. I was just going to... Very, very short comment, then, sir. I was going to point out that the, that the pigs, a.k.a. Portugal, Italy, Greece, and Spain, have been, um, have been, are broke for, are, are broke and, and, and 
for other or and financial disasters for other reasons rather than attacks. Okay, thank you. A good comment. Thank you very much. Uh, and He's referring to a point I made. Take it. So yeah, um, I don't disagree that there are many factors that contribute to the problems in Europe, but clearly the value-added tax has not helped those countries. So, and we're being told here it was the best thing we could do for British Columbia, but they haven't increased jobs there, and they haven't uh, increased or lowered prices, and they haven't stimulated business activity. So I think we can both at least agree that the value-added tax, the HST, did not help those countries. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let's come on, Peter. Uh, yeah, that's, that's why all those 130 countries have rapidly gone back to a PST, GST type system. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. We'll go to the next question. You, sir, yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm a business owner. HST hasn't helped me a bit. But what really concerns me here, and I want to ask a question to everybody, why is the government your tax in deceitfully and spending millions of our tax dollars to try and convince us it's good for us. Uh, I, it was brought in deceitfully. The propaganda I read is deceitful. How many times in the past has a government spent our tax money to try and brainwash into accepting more taxes? Okay, thank you very much. I'm assuming that is to the Smart Tax Alliance first. So it's to both. Thank you. Well, I'm certainly not going to defend the government the way they brought in the tax policy. I thought it was, uh, it was very poorly brought in. Um, most of us, in fact, um, you know, I certainly didn't have enough information to quickly evaluate it, um, and that information came out very slowly. Um, unfortunately, the Fight HST people had kind of a jump on, the, on us and, and, uh, uh, because it was brought out so poorly. And once we did the research, once I looked into it myself, uh, then I realized what the benefits to creating jobs in British Columbia were. And I think that if you look at it compared to the old PST GST system, we're much better off under HST. That wasn't my question. Okay. My question was, when has previously a government spent our tax money to convince us to accept more taxes? Well, the, the question actually was, that given the government has brought it in deceitfully, uh, and then they say it's good for us. That was the, the, the question that you originally said, sir. And so I, I need to let the other side now answer as well. Bill. Sure, I'll answer. Uh, I'll tell you why. They think you're stupid. They think you'll listen to stick men. They think you'll listen to all sorts of government advertising that, is this still working? There we go. Uh, they think you'll listen to all sorts of government advertising that tells you what you intuitively know is not true. The HST is not good for you. The average family will not be better off. They won't be better off under a 12% HST or an 11% HST or a 10% HST. So they can quote all the statistics and all the paid off economists who've done reports that support their position, but when you look at your bills, when you look at your expenses, when you look at the things that, God forbid, you have to buy a new house or put a roof on your existing house or any large expenditure on top of everything else, that you're going to be poorer off. Nobody offers you bribes, money, $175 per child, regardless of your income, all of those sort of things. Even Kevin Falcon and Christy Clark will get a check. And it's all good. We're making more money. We're giving you money. Dream on. It's not true. Okay. Thank you, Bill. I'm going to go for a question over here next. Um, I just want to ask a historical question. And I'm going back to Brian Mulroney. And there was a 13% manufacturer's tax, which was hidden then. So I just want to understand, was that 13% tax, was that a provincial, or was it federal, or, or was it a combination? And then how did that get changed when we went to the GST? Okay, technical question. I think uh, Bill here would, uh, would take that first. The sales tax, the sales tax was a federal tax. Manufacturing tax. This is, the question was the manufacturing tax, wasn't it? Is that right? Manufacturing sales tax. Manufacturing sales tax. Mm. That was in effect uh, during the 50s and 60s. Actually, I think it ended early 70s. No. Uh, it was a federal tax. It was, I, as I recall, of 10%. Mr. Mulroney brought in a GST at uh, initially 7%. 7%, 
Mr. Kretchen, during an election, said he was going to eliminate it completely. He showed us the red book. It's going to be gone. Of course, it didn't go. We forgave him, however. Uh, Mr. Uh, our present Prime Minister, Mr. Harper, said he'd reduce it a point at a time and, and he eventually eliminate it. Well, now they've decided, the feds in the province, to combine the two, now it can stay there. And that's, we're stuck with whatever the amount, except as I said earlier, and I would bet my bottom dollar on it, it's going to go up before it goes down. And the promise of 10%, who knows? Okay, thank you, Bill. Katrina. Yes, my comment is that um, uh, it um, also echoed the same. It, the 13%, the manufacturer sales tax, it, it was a federal tax. Now, when the GST is introduced, um, initially, 7%, and with that, there is a mechanism for businesses to claim back the tax. Now the HST, it even makes it better for businesses because now you are able to recover the entire 12% and 13% and 13% you know, um, and therefore it's cheaper for businesses. Okay. There's also a hidden tax that made our exports much more expensive. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to go for a question here and then I'm going to go from one from the... Uh, um, I, I uh, run a, a, a very small business, I'm self-employed, um, and I am struggling mightily to understand how returning to a PST plus GST to, have to, to administer two taxes is actually going to make my life better. Uh, I'm just, I'm tearing my hair out trying to figure out how that could possibly be the case and if you guys could demonstrate that to me, I'd be amazed, um, but interested. But frankly, I'm, I'm skeptical. So, but I'd be interested to hear how, it, how that's possible. Okay, you'll, thank you, Bill. You'll hear and you'll listen, right? Uh, so um, the, uh, <coughs> the PST, uh, you had two forms. You had a PST and a GST form to submit. But now, I'm sure you're into, into the computer age. Uh, much of it can be done by the computer. It doesn't take that much extra work. But just consider this. I'm a plant grower. I'm a nurseryman. I grow plants. Under the PSD, I had a farm card, which allowed me to purchase anything for the growing of plants without paying a tax on it. I showed my farm tax, farm card, and they noted the number. I saw, now I have to submit the HSD. I sold to a wholesaler. I sell to wholesalers. The wholesalers had a tax number. So they gave me their tax number. It went on the invoice. I didn't have to report it except I suppose an auditor could come and look at it any time, but it was there. Now the wholesaler has to fill in an HSD form. The wholesaler sold to a retailer. Under the PST, the retailer had a tax number. So he didn't pay the tax. And now the retailer has to pay the HST, fill in the form and send in HST. Uh, the uh, retailer sold to a consumer, then as now, and the consumer paid the tax. Now that's why when they closed the collection department for the PST in Victoria, they all moved to Ottawa, or at least a good many of them, those that weren't employed elsewhere here, but there are more, many more people in, in Ottawa now collecting 12% where they used to collect 5%. Only a difference in the percentages, but they've increased the bureaucracy like crazy because they're getting so many more forms coming through. So maybe it's a little simpler for you. I'm not sure that it's all that much simpler, but for you as a taxpayer, Ottawa is taking far more to do it than what it was previously costing. And for businesses, there are many more forms than what there used to be. Okay, thank you, Bill. Response on the other side. Hi, on the contrary, um, I, my experience has been that, you know, you, you pay the tax, the, the HST on everything, but you also claim everything back as a business. And Mr. Vanderson, do you not claim your, your PST portion back? And then if it goes back to the PST, you have to, to segregate all those and you, 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 the PST become a sunk cost to you. It's a cost of doing business for you. And then 
and you still have to file the GST return. Okay, thank you very much. Now I'm getting a, a note here that people are saying they can't hear. Apparently, it looks as though there might be too many mics on. I can only see two mics on, so I think we should be okay. Uh, can everyone hear okay? Okay, I'm going to go for a question uh, from the cards. So uh, here's a, a good broad one uh, to both sides. And it's an appeal to all of you. Which way should I vote if I want to reduce the inequality between the rich and the poor? I'll start with this side. I said it was a good question. <laughs> well, um, certainly the, the poor benefit the most, most from an HST system. Uh, and and the, reason, the reason because is because um, the poor get a rebate, um, a significant rebate that's three times. When in, in, uh, with the PST system, they got a $75 rebate. With the HST system, the rebate goes to $230, and it's based on a higher income threshold. So it's fairly significant. Um, the other thing is, is on lower income people, they spend more money on basic groceries and those services that are exempt from HST. Um, so um, it's, uh, it's much more beneficial from, for the low income earners than the high income earners. Okay, thank you. Bill. Thank you. I think I had my volume turned down there, but so I'll not shout this time. The, uh, yes, Gordon Campbell, our former Premier and Finance Minister Colin Hansen, uh, got together one time in 2000 and I thought, how can we further help the poor? We've done so much for them already, we must help them more, we just haven't done quite enough to help them. And they thought about it, and they thought, what's the best thing we can do? Well, we haven't increased the minimum wage in eight years. No, not going to do that. Why would we increase the minimum wage? That, that's not good enough. I know, we'll bring in a two billion dollar a year tax shift from business onto consumers and will give a rebate to some of the poorer people in the province. Now that, if you believe that, you should vote for the HST if you're making low income. The reality is the only reason, the only reason there's a rebate is to make up for the fact that poor people are spending more of their relatively minor disposable income and, and necessity income on the HST. It's not to help people. You don't need to introduce a $2 billion tax to help poor people, for goodness sakes. Okay, thank you. Gentleman at the back. Thank you. First of all, here, my gratitude to the three gentlemen to our right here who, uh, without them, the reference of all those volunteers there, we wouldn't be here tonight at all. And we wouldn't be having even that joke of a thing that's uh, been promised in the future. So right there, and that should never be understood, my gratitude out to those three gentlemen. Now, I don't like paying somebody else's taxes. And after 60 years now of a PST, now gone, why should I, and consumers, out of our pockets, subsidize your business? And this is to the to the Sins of Omissions Tax Alliance there on the left. Okay, thank you very much. So the question is, I think I'm, I'll just delve into slightly, HST is subsidizing business. Why should they believe it's subsidizing business and is it subsidizing business? Well, let me try to attempt to answer this question. I'm like you, I go to work every day and I want a paycheck. If, if a tax isn't good for business, I don't think I have a paycheck coming to, my, to me on, on a regular basis. And under the PST system, uh, the, the, the low income uh, individuals will get $75 tax credit. But if you're low income, you don't pay any tax, and what are you going to do with the tax credit you can't use? Okay, thank you. Why should I subsidize business now, all consumers? Hang on just a second. We have, got, we have got your question. I'm going to go to the other side. Chris. So you've, you've hit the hammer on the nail of the essential problem with the HST, and that is that it transfers the burden of the tax, um, the tax burden from businesses to consumers. And that's why it actually doesn't help businesses in the end. We're not against tax credits for businesses. Governments have done that throughout history, and it's actually a very good thing from time to time. It can help stimulate businesses. But if you at the same time impede consumers, you're not helping the businesses and that's the big problem with it. The other thing too is that if businesses pass on some of those savings or some of those HST credits to their workers in terms of higher wages in order to help those workers offset the burden from the HST, 
then you're reducing the value to the business. It becomes a net zero uh, end gain because the business doesn't gain if it gives that credit away to its employees. If it doesn't give the credit to its employees, it's asking the employees to take a standard of living cut on behalf of the business. So the business is prospering at the expense of its employees. And additionally, the business is no longer paying its fair share of infrastructure costs, roads, utilities, all these other things. It's all on the consumer. And here in British Columbia, this is a particularly acute point because we have a very much an export-based economy. It's a commodities-based economy, which means when businesses sell products overseas, overseas consumers are essentially paying our PST on those businesses by paying for those goods. So that's money coming from outside our province into the province. When they transfer the tax burden under the HST onto consumers here, the consumer here is paying the entire tax burden. We're not bringing it from revenues outside. So it's very counterintuitive and I'm glad you pointed that out. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Gentleman there. This uh, is a question of clarification. Uh, while the, uh, the uh, no side is arguing that the, uh, the, the HST is uh, going to eventually go down to 10%, I'm puzzled about the uh, idea that if we doubled it to 24 or 25%, we would then be able to compete with Sweden uh, as, a, as a nation. <laughs> Can somebody help clarify that? Thank you very much. Peter. Well, you know, I, I think the point was that it's, uh, um, going to an HST system which is going to create more jobs in this province has uh, significant benefits to business. And when I say significant benefits to business, that means jobs. And when we're talking about creating jobs in this province, we're in a global economy now. Um, if, for instance, we go back to the PST, GST system, Ontario, in our particular business, um, which is the film and television business, will have a 7% advantage on goods and services. With a dollar and a dollar five, we stand to lose at least 20% of our business up here, which means 4,000 employees. So if people have jobs, then you're going to have strong families, you're going to have people with money that they're going to spend that money in the stores. The history shows that taxes have been reduced in this province. If you look at your income tax the last 10 years, it's dropped by 10%. If you look at the GST specifically, it's gone from 7 to 6 to 5%. Um, so um, we, we can't make the changes in the HST this year because we've got a contract. And I know that Mr. Delaney and Mr. Vanders and Mr. Thielman don't believe in contracts, but we've got a contract with the federal government, and that's why we're gonna re it's not going to be reduced till 11% until next year and then 13% in 2014. Okay, thank you very much. And now we've got a question. Uh, can we have a response, please? Oh, I, I'm very sorry. Sorry, no, no sorry Bill. Sorry. Thank you very much. Well, uh, there's only one government I'm aware of that's ripped up contracts, and it's the one that's bringing in the HST. But let's talk about jobs for a minute. Look across the country. Look at British Columbia's unemployment rate as of April, 7.9. Then look next door at Alberta, 6.1, no HST. Look at Saskatchewan, 5.6, no HST. Look at Manitoba, 5.4, no HST. We've had an enormous amount of job loss, not job gain. Our employment rate in British Columbia, as Chris said before, is higher, not lower. The HST has been in place for almost a year now, and we have higher unemployment, and every province next to us, our immediate competitors, have lower unemployment. The picture is clear. Thanks, Bill. Sorry about that. Okay, next question. And this is for Bill van der Zand. Isn't there contradiction in your arguments when, on one side, you argue that Smart Tax Alliance is supported by the, business, by the businesses because it is good for them and not at consumers? But then, on the other side, you argue that the HST will hurt businesses. Have you got that? Yeah, I, um, I mentioned small business. I don't think big business will be hurt by the HST, not at all, and I've never mentioned that. But certainly small businesses, depending on the consumers to come into their stores locally and make a purchase, they will suffer, particularly uh, with respect to discretionary items or those that are in the tourist-related businesses or in restaurants. Those are the ones that are suffering. It's not the guy that's exporting logs from Kitimat, raw logs, barge after barge after barge going to China. 
or it's not the trucks that are lining up at Blaine crossing into the U.S. to have the logs, raw logs, cut into two by fours and boards that is suffering. He's getting his HST back, however, on the trucks he purchases or whatever else, even on the pickup trucks that he might use occasionally in the business. So he's getting that benefit. And it's not the cable company that you call when your computer breaks down and somebody answers in Nova Scotia or Prince Edward Island or perhaps even India and they get their HST back for the purchases and the expense they have here in setting up their stations or their uh, whatever the equipment they need to uh, uh, relay messages. And it's not General Electric, the big American company that has all of these run of the river projects creating electricity and selling it to BC Hydro for less than BC Hydro, for more, for more money than BC Hydro can sell it for, which is why your rates are going to go up, at least one of the reasons why your rates are going to go up. But they're also getting their HST back. Folks, there are small businesses going to suffer. You consumers are all going to suffer more, but the big businesses may prosper. Okay, thank you. Um, th those are easy words to say, but let's listen to the independent panel report. Virtually all economic analysis finds the HST increases economic growth, productivity, wages, jobs, and quality of jobs. And 98% of the businesses, this is from the, economic, the independent panel report, 98% of the businesses in British Columbia are small business. A move back to the PST GST will likely have a negative impact on all business and investor confidence because of the uncertainty over the tax policy. Okay, thank you. And I'm going to another question now, and it's to the yes side. Why are you so focused on promoting that everything around government policy is a conspiracy? Don't you believe in the democratic freedoms we have as BC citizens? Yeah, that's a tough one. Well, <clears throat> of course we believe in the democratic freedoms and that's the interesting thing about this HST referendum. That was earned by the people of British Columbia. It was not granted to you by a benevolent government. It was done in desperation by a premier whose uh, uh, leadership was in tatters and was, uh, government was collapsing because of the opposition by the people to their tax policy. This is the only province in Canada that has an initiative and referendum law. We're sitting here today because of that law, because we have the opportunity as a province to actually vote democratically on this process. Everywhere else in the world where the HST has been brought in, they were never given a referendum on it. Ask anybody in Europe today or even in the maritime provinces if they'd like to have their HST and give them a referendum on it and see if it lasts. They did a, a survey a, a couple of months ago that showed 87% of Canadians are opposed to the HST, including the maritime provinces. So we get a say and they don't. There's nothing more democratic than that. And Fight HST has been the leader in fighting for that democracy, so much so that Christy Clark owes her job to us. Thank you. Any response? The question was why are you so focused on promoting that everything around the government policy is a conspiracy? Don't you believe in the democratic freedoms? And that was addressed to the S side. Well, you know, I, I honestly think that side does it because it's much more fun debating fiction than fact. Um, if you, and, and, and we really, we really do encourage you to get your own information. I, I use the independent panels report because it provides information that's been researched. I don't hear any information that's been researched on the benefits of PST except to hire 300 more tax collectors. Um, and, and I haven't heard one little bit of benefit of, on the PST from that side. Um, let me quote another couple of things from the report. A return to the PST GST would make BC exports less competitive and dampen business investment. And let's make no mistake, half of the businesses, these are the small businesses in British Columbia, are now exporters. So if we want to harm these businesses, yeah, we can go back to the old PST GST system, but the HST is a much more efficient system for creating jobs. Okay, thank you very much. Sir. Okay. Uh, this question is addressed to uh, both sides of the debate. Will corporations pass on the savings from the HST on to consumers? That's a very straightforward one. Do you want to start here? Well, like I mentioned earlier, there's uh, a guy by the name of John Kesselman who's actually figured that out. And the short answer I can give you is yes, they already have. 
But unfortunately, the long answer would take a little bit longer to explain. So again, I suggest you Google John Kesselman HST. It will come up with a study. And there's some, a few big tables as to broken down by industry in British Columbia as to which ones have actually dropped the prices and by how much. And there's kind of a four or five point executive summary right beneath it. Okay, thank you. To the side, Bill. I don't recall uh, Professor Kesselman predicting the economic meltdown of 2008 or many other of the things that are coming, but he can actually predict into the future how each and indivi every individual business that's benefiting from the HSC will pass on the cost to you. But the more important thing is, unless you buy a lot of aluminum foil, unless you buy a lot of two-by-fours, you're not going to benefit because the big companies, the Alcans, the Cominkos, the, the Canfors who produce those products export them. They don't sell them to consumers, and yet they're the main beneficiaries. So. Those aren't consumer products. Unfortunately, in British Columbia, we don't produce a lot of consumer products. So the benefits are never going to be passed on to you because there aren't any that are exactly going to consumers. Bill, did you want to throw in that? No, I'll just, I'll just say that if any of you had any doubt about uh, Dr. Kesselman, look at your last grocery bill, look at the last bill you had from any of the drug stores or wherever you might have shopped. And if you find something priced lower than what it was a year ago, perhaps you might want to talk to Dr. Kesselman. And one last uh, point, even those big companies that uh, do get the benefit from the HST, they sell their, um, their goods at the world commodity price. So they're not going to lower the price for you when the price of lumber is already set at the world rate. So there's no savings to be passed on there even if they wanted to. It just goes straight to the bottom line to their, their shareholders. Okay, we've been asked for supplementary. Chris. So I just want to say, I didn't say John Kesselman predicted, I said John Kesselman computed, is what the actual numbers were in British Columbia. Okay, thank you very much. Lady over there. Mr. Leach has twice at least referred to this independent report. I got the summary in the mail today. I'll quote from it, then I'll have my question. Overall businesses will pay close to $730 million less in taxes under the HST. This reduces both operating and investment costs, making it cheaper to run their businesses and to make new investments to expand their operations. That will mean economic growth and better paying jobs. My own notation, I did this at home before these recent speakers asked their question. There is no mention of reduced prices to cons consumer. I have not seen it. Okay, thank you very much indeed. To my right. Um, well, ma'am, I, I, you know, I run a small business in the film industry, and, and uh, um, certainly it makes us more competitive. And, and it's and what it's done is it's allowed us to compete by keeping our costs low. And we're in a globally competitive industry. Um, every film that we try and attract here, um, there's five different competitors that are competing for that business and unless we are competitive and I think that goes for a lot of businesses unless they're competitive price wise um, they won't be in business and it's just it's, it's just a fundamental uh, part of business and and but you know John Kesselman has done the research on it and and I, I would I, I would reference that report also um, but my experience in small business is that um, we have to be competitive otherwise we're, we're going to be out of business price wise I understand that, sir, but I should have been, by now, almost a year later, been seeing something reduced. Well, I mean, I see the flyers from Walmart saying they're reducing these prices and these prices, and they, so there, there are examples. That's old history, and you're talking to no fan of Walmart. Okay, well, uh, you know, um, I, I, I just have to re really refer to the research. I, I, yeah. Okay, thank you. No mention of reduced prices to consumers. Yeah, so um, in order to come up with the numbers they do in there, the Smart Tax Alliance and their big business friends and the government want to have it both ways. They want to tell you that 90% of what you're paying in HST will be passed back to you in savings. If that's true, that leaves 10% for the businesses of the HST, 7% after tax. 7% of HST to a business is less than 1% of their overall revenues. Where on God's green earth are they going to get new trucks and new equipment and new jobs and stimulation and everything from less than 1% of their revenues. It's not possible. So that means you're either getting the 90% in savings passed on to you and business has nothing left over to stimulate the economy with or create jobs. Or they're not giving you the 90% in savings, they're keeping it. 
But you can't have it both ways, but that's what the Smart Tax Alliance wants, wants to believe. And Peter belongs to an industry, which I'm also uh, a person who works in, the film industry, which is the most heavily subsidized industry in the, in the country. 30 to 40 percent of their budgets come out of tax credits already. And he's telling you that another maybe 1 percent savings on an overall budget from HST is going to make or break his industry? Well, if that's the case, he doesn't know what he's doing. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm going on to the next question and then I'll go back to the floor. Uh, for most consumers, the biggest lifetime purchase is property. How is HST good for real estate? It's win uh, is it a windfall for government? We have an accountant on the panel, two I think actually. Uh, please answer. I think they're referring to Pedro Carolina. Um, I don't have a lot of experience on properties. However, on consumer goods, I can tell you that, that um, all it takes is um, one person or one business to lower the price and, and there will be a domino effect. And because we are competitive, okay, and, and the message has to get out. And you may not see an immediate price drop, but what, I see, what I'm seeing is that companies are employing more people and also they have not raised the prices and with the um, fluctuation in, in the market and the dollars and so on and so forth um, you know uh, importing goods or um, exporting goods or export business are more uh, not as competitive but we don't see any rise in the price it stays constant <coughs> Nothing to do with the question. The, the question in, in, in terms of properties, um, I believe there is um, certain credits on, on homes and so on. Like, like I said, I'm, I don't deal with properties, so I, I don't answer the question. Okay, I'm going to go over. The question that was written was for most consumers, the biggest lifetime purchase is property. How is HST good for real estate? It's a windfall for government. We have accountant on the panel. Please answer. Peter. Well, um, I work for a company called Boza Developments. Um, we have two film studios which I manage and then, but the main part of our business is, um, is real estate, residential real estate, and most of it is over the limit of the five hundred and twenty-five thousand um, dollars, and and so it's it's HST able. Um, but Nat Boza, who runs that company, supports the HST. Um, the reason he does so is because he recognizes that it's good for business in the province, and for us to be able to afford homes, we have to have jobs, and that's um, that's the key, and that's what he recognizes, and that's why he's uh, voting to keep the HST. Okay, thank you very much, and from. Yes, sir. Thanks. Uh, the HST is disastrous if you're buying property. It's disastrous in every way, shape, and form. Peter mentioned the $525,000 limit on which you get a rebate. After that, everything is taxed the extra 7%. It's an enormous amount of money. Your realtor has to pay 7% that they never had to pay before. Ask a realtor what they think of the HST, because I've done that. Your home inspector, you have to pay an extra 7% that was never paid before, because there wasn't an HST or a, an extra 7%, a 12% on those services. If you do a home renovation, a $50,000 home renovation, you're going to pay an extra $3,500. Uh, Katrina said there's nobody working in the black market. I've had media people tell me they're buying under the table already because of the HST. Vacation homes, full 12%. There's no rebate, no exemption on vacation properties. A $100,000 cottage, an extra 12%. $12,000 HST. This is disastrous for that. Uh, what Mr. Bose is doing, I'm not sure, but I'll tell you that the, the new home builders have fought like hell to try and get an exemption, try and get an increase because it hurts their business. They can't sell their new homes. One across the street from me went up $21,000 on July 1st last year when the HST came in. Okay. Thank you very much. We've got only about five or six minutes left, so I've got to move fairly quickly and ask both the panel and the people to just give a very quick question. Sir? Uh, observation, uh, Germany has very high uh, labour costs, quite horrendous actually, yet they keep exporting. So what is the uh, problem in British Columbia? Why can't the big businesses uh, seem to uh, increase sales? Uh, is it perhaps a problem with econ economic policy? Would economic policy be more effective than tax policy, which is just dividing up the, the pie. 
would better management be more effective? Peter. Um, well, you know, I, I, I'm sure there's a number of factors in it, but, you know, certainly we've seen uh, exports in British Columbia uh, to Asia increase dramatically, especially in the forestry industry. And, you know, I think you're well aware of that. Um, uh, but um, the HST is something that makes us more competitive on the global market. We don't, with the resources that we export, we don't set the prices ourselves. But what it allows us to do is open up that uh, lumber mill. It, it allows us to open up that mine because our costs are lower. And when we, our costs are lower, we become competitive. And then, and then we can accept those world prices because the, the business model works. Okay, thank you. Quick response, please. Well, the problem with the HST is that it doesn't discriminate between one business and another. So if you're exporting raw commodities like logs, like uh, crude oil, like um, coal, all of these types of things, uh, you get the HST credit as well, but you're basically exporting jobs. So if you want to create jobs in British Columbia, the government should be giving the tax credit or tax credits to businesses that manufacture here our resources and have value added. Okay, thank you. Question there first, and then you. Here first. Okay. Quick um, one, please. I'm not sure if I fully understand the whole uh, um, tax structure of what's what's 12 what's 12 percent and what what is not applicable for HST. Um, I'm just doing a quick calculation. I think my strata fee has gone up because of the HST. Uh, my dental uh, expenses has gone up. I have a dental surgery scheduled for this year, which is going to cost me three thousand dollars. Um, before I'm only, uh, I only have to pay uh, GST on it. Uh, with the difference, and based on all my, uh, I eat out every every week, um, at least twice a week. Uh, I'm doing a quick calculation, and I'm paying about six hundred dollars more based on the list of items that I have on this piece of paper that I'm working on. Um, so tell me, if someone can tell me how paying six hundred dollars more. Uh, it's good for me as an average person. I'm not a business owner. Uh, I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm just an employee working for someone. And I have to spend $600 more this year on taxes. And how is that good for me? Okay, thank you. First to my right. Yeah, under the, the HST system, it, you, you will be getting a credit of $230. So if you compute it back into... Um, taxable spending, that is a, that is a $3,286. That would subsidize the additional amounts that you spend on your dental bills and so on. Okay, thank you. Um, on my left, Bill? Yeah, you have to be at the very low end income-wise in order to get that benefit he just mentioned. But uh, yes, if you calculate your HST costs over the coffee you bought, buy tomorrow morning or you might go out to eat or whatever, the smaller things during the course of a relatively short time, you don't come up with a real number. You have to take it over a longer period because you're going to find the roof's going to go. You're going to need new gutters or you need dental work or all of those bigger items. Your fridge breaks down. You need a new stove. The dishwasher doesn't work. It's all of those things that really hit you hard. Okay. Thank you, Bill. I'm going to go for a question here. Hello. Hi. Yeah, I haven't heard any mention of parity between the Canadian and the U.S. dollar tonight. And as I sort of understand the way the world works, when there's parity between our two currencies, there's an investment drop-off from U.S. you know monies, and and that maybe explains a little bit of the softening in the amount of or the lack of amount of uh, job creation over this last year. I'm not sure, but I could suggest that that might be the case. And as I understand it, uh, do we think that the HST might be, as an incentive, a good way to continue to encourage offshore investment in the province? Okay, thank you very much. Quick response, Peter? Yeah, you, you, well, I think it absolutely does. I know in our particular industry, um, with the dollar going above par, it really is, was the only thing um, uh, the change in that tax policy was very significant for us. And uh, we went down to Los Angeles last July and um, it brought up, you know, several new projects that wouldn't otherwise be here. Okay, thanks. Very quick. Well, when the dollar goes up, of course, we also see cross-border shopping increases too, which was also probably damaging the economy. And the fact that the United States will probably never bring in an HST or a value-added tax doesn't help us either. 
And this is one of the things that I think people forget when they talk about Europe and how all these other countries are adopting an HST. Uh, we don't live next to them. We don't trade with them. We do 80% of our trade with the United States. And they don't have that. So that doesn't make us more competitive with them. It makes us less competitive. Because at the end of the day, there's just additional costs for consumers here. They, they go over across the border. Um, yeah, I don't see how it's any benefit whatsoever in terms of our largest trading partner. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, this debate has become about questions of uh, the integrity and credibility of government and about tax policy. Uh, the property question earlier inspired me to ask the question of Mr. Vanderzam. Uh, sir, you hardly have a spotless reputation for integrity in government, and you introduced the much hated property transfer tax. Um, do you feel that's ironic? Could you comment on what that does in terms of your uh, integrity as a source? We, we want questions really to in, in increase our knowledge of uh, GST rather than necessarily a pointed attack on one oh, of the panels. In that case, I'm, I'm interested in a comparison between the economic impact, certainly in terms of housing affordability, of the property tra transfer tax versus the yeah. admittedly imperfect effects of the HST. Yeah, the property purchase tax is ridiculous. It shouldn't be. It's crazy. It was meant to be adjusted. It started because we were getting a lot of foreign buying and was, it was driving up prices, so we said, okay, we need to make sure that they too contribute and that's how it came to be. It's a much longer story. But it was intended to be adjusted. So if the, the, uh, the lower percentage was on the first hundred thousand and as the cost went up it was intended to be adjusted. Well you know what? That's uh, 20 odd years ago. No government has adjusted it. No government's got rid of it. I think that's criminal. That it's still in place with no adjustments. I can just add quickly to that. Um, this question always comes up, and it's a political smear question, because in 1949, the B.C. Liberal government brought in the PST. And we don't hear anybody asking about that. Why do we still have a PST, and why aren't the Liberals wearing that? It's, it's sheer nonsense, and it's political. Okay, thanks, Chris. Come on, Peter. Well, we don't have a PST, thank goodness, and hopefully it doesn't come back. Okay, the very last question is going to be... How, how are we going to... I'm, so, I'm sorry that we, we really do have to start. We're way over time. This is the very last question. It's a very short one. So thank you very much. And it's an online question. I think we haven't had an online one tonight, so let's go for this one. It's a quick one. The film industry is saving money, but yet the cost of movie or cable TV has not gone down. Quick answers. Why? Peter. Well, you know, actually those are unrelated. Um, what we do in British Columbia is we create content. Um, so um, when we're creating content, um, there's 40 jurisdictions in North America alone that are vying for this business. Um, and we have to be competitive to get the business. It's got nothing to do with, you know, the distribution costs of the business. That's, that's a, a completely different business. Chris? Well, of course, again, this points out the problem with the HST, which is that it's a consumer-based tax that spread out to far more items, goods and services, than the PST was. And the film industry cannot pass on any savings to you because it doesn't sell to you directly. The movie theater sells to you directly, and they're not doing that. They've increased the price, and the, the HST has increased the price for that. So, so much for savings being passed on. You heard it right here. Peter's not passing any on to you. Okay, thank you very much. That completes our question, so I think I'm going to get something here. That was just a short interruption. We're now going on to the uh, final remarks, uh, just a one or two minute little uh, final comment from each of our main people. So, Smart Tax Alliance, uh, you'll be leading off. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming. Uh, I know it's nice weather outside and we're all inside talking about tax policy. What I would encourage you to do is go read. Look at the information on the HST and BC website. Look at the information that I've told you about the John Kesselman study. And look at the information of the studies that they've quoted. All right, they didn't. The HST is about tax. It's not about government. They're trying to make the debate political. They're trying to smear previous governments. They're trying to bring all sorts of past history into it. That's not the question. The question is, do you want a more efficient tax policy in British Columbia, which I do, which is why I'm voting, voting no to keep the HST. Thank you very much. And the final remarks, Bill. Thanks, Peter. 
Well, you know, make it political. My gosh, if taxes aren't the most political thing in, uh, in our entire society, it's true. But look, I'm working with Bill Vanderzam. He's a former social credit premier. I'm a new Democrat. I spent years trying to get rid of him. Delaney, he's a right winger. I'm working with him on the left. I mean, this is the sort of thing that brings people together. And you know, Peter said, well, you can be finance minister for a day. But don't forget this, you're a taxpayer all your life. This is your only chance, your only chance to be the finance minister and tell the government that the deceptive, misleading, dishonest way they introduced this tax is bad and it should be rejected and that it's a bad tax as well. Don't believe there's 10%. You see there's stickers 10%. It's not a 10% tax unless you believe it'll happen three years from now after a provincial election. And of course, we'd never hear a provincial premier of any political stripe say, gee, things are worse than I thought. I can't do what I promised. I don't care if you're NDP or conservative or liberal or social credit. Don't believe politicians three years out when we don't know what the economy is going to do or anything else. There's a 12% HST, not 11, not 10. Now, let's just say, for the sake of argument, this is 10. How is it that when there's 5% more on so many different items, from restaurant food to your haircut, to your basic cable, your basic telephone, your vitamins, your massage therapy, all these things, your home renovations, repairs, how is it that the HST at that 10% is going to put more money in your pocket? Where is the $175 grant coming from? Where are all these HST checks, the money coming from, when you're going to be the beneficiary and you're going to have more money than when you started? There's only one taxpayer, as people say. I don't care if you're left or right. It's coming out of your pocket. Don't believe the flim-flam artists. Don't take advice from stick men. Think about it and make the right choice. Vote yes to extinguish the HST and teach the government for now and for future generations of government a lesson. Well, thank you very much for that uh, final closing remark. And I think uh, a round of applause for all the panellists who've come today. So, thank you. And, of course, thank you very much for coming out this evening. And we encourage you very much to follow the discussion uh, on www.hstpublicforums.ca where you'll find links to Facebook and Twitter. Videos of tonight's forum will also be available on YouTube. And remember, and this is really important, to vote in the HSD referendum. Watch for your ballots in the mail. I believe they're all coming out on June the 13th. And just before I make my final comment and wish you all a safe journey home, uh, those of you who wish to just stay on there, there will be the opportunity to having a one-on-one -on -one with uh, members of the panel who will be staying behind, just a little bit behind uh, later to talk to you. So thank you very much indeed. Thanks for coming out. Uh, hopefully the weather's going to be improving and back again to sunshine and heat. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Well, well done. No problem at all. Thank you very much. Thank you.